I'm a defensive back, so I'm gonna be the first one to say, and I'm sure every offensive line coach, I'm sure every you know, defensive line coach, I'm sure every receiver coach would say the same exact thing that I'm going to say right now. So as a defensive back, I'm going to say you can never have too many good defensive backs, point blank, period, DN. So if a corner is what they feel like they need to go to the next level, which I do feel like they need another corner on the opposite side of Jeff Okuda. Mike Hughes is not an outside corner. He's made his bread. He's made his money in the NFL as a nickel corner starting back in minnesota actually um so i do think they need someone that's on the other side they thought amani was the guy coming off a pro bowl or alternate or whatever he was last year caught six interceptions um but he just hasn't been the same guy this year i saw it back in training camp i went out there and watched those guys and when i left there i didn't want to make any comments on it because i had only saw a couple of days of practice but I kept mentioning that I saw some things that I really didn't like. And then those things kept happening throughout the season. And now our money isn't, hasn't even been in the starting. He hasn't been playing. And then he get in the game today. And I'm just like, my, my goodness. I'm glad he, he was only out there for a limited time because it was like, they were going right after him when he was in the game. So I definitely think that if the, if the opportunity is there, they should add a corner. But I think they need, honestly, I think what those guys need in Detroit is they need a good, young veteran, right? And it, and and I know I know that's probably what an oxymoron, what they call it when you say, say a it all young, the time. <laughs> a young veteran. <laughs> You're talking I mean, about like they, a young uh, guy with experience. There yeah, you they go. need You're a talking guy. like a guy that's been good but he's going into his second contract. Somebody right. they're willing to pay some money for to have him here for a while to actually be a leader that can actually provide good play at the same time instead of a guy that's at the tail end of his career and can't do anything. Right. They need someone that has been successful in this league. He understands how to play. He understands how to prepare. Because if you look at it, a lot of those guys in the line secondary right now who have they had to learn from? Nobody. When Jeff Okuda got there, they traded Darius Slay. He wasn't there with Jeff Okuda. Right. So what corner has Jeff Okuda, what veteran corner has Jeff Okuda had to learn from? When Marcus Whoever Trufant when, when Trufant went there, he wasn't going there to be a leader. He was going there to try to get some money. One-year deal. I'm just trying to play in whatever, right? What corner has been there for Jeff Okuda to say, I'm going to take you under my wing and I'm going to teach you how to be a great player. You got great ability. I need to teach you how to play the game. Absolutely. When you look at even, <laughs> even when you look at Tracy Walker, right? Yeah. I had one year with Tracy and then Quandre got traded the next year. Mm-hmm. So for the most part, Tracy has been trying to figure it out on his own. And doing decent at it with natural talent and what he's learned just by playing. Right. It's so the at the end of the day. Yeah. So you need to get a young guy who's like they said, is going into their second contract. Which would be and, and, and I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but it would be equivalent to what they got when they got me. I was I was a 23 year old rookie, so you know, I, I did my full time in college. I played my full four years in Houston. And then when I came to Detroit, I was a 27, probably 28 year old guy going into my second contract. And I had played football. So I was I was that guy to be able to take. They drafted Darius Slay. They signed me in April in free agency and they drafted Darius Slay right afterwards. And I was the guy to be able to take Darius Slay under my wing and teach him how to be a pro. I was the guy that was able to help Quandre Diggs teach him how to be a pro. And yeah, there were other guys there. Rasheen Mathis, we had a good group. James Ahedabo, we had a good group. But you need those guys that are young enough to continue to play with you but experienced enough to teach you how to be a pro. 
And I don't know if any of those guys in the secondary has had that consistently. So what we're seeing now is, in my opinion, really only a tip of what they could potentially be if they just have someone that can teach them the game. Not from a player stand, I mean, not from a coach's standpoint, but from a player standpoint. Because the coach is going to say one thing. The player is going to tell you, hey, man, this is how this is going to play out in the game. Coach saying it's going to be like this, 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 this. But in the game, it's going to be like this. In the game, it's going to be 80,000 people screaming. So you're going to have to understand my body. You, 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 need, to, you need to learn my body language my signal like when i i can't you can't hear me talking to you so you got to know what i'm thinking just by seeing my body right those are Uh, things that the coach can't really teach you that's player to player being in the fire with those guys and i think they need that so i wouldn't say necessarily they need to use the first round pick to get a good corner they need to use free agency money to go and sign a good guy. They don't have they don't have to be the top guy. I wasn't the top safety when I came out. And I was a free agent. But I fit what the Detroit Lions needed at that time. So Absolutely. I'm not saying you got to go spend 25 million dollars a year for a corner or a safety. But you need to find that guy that you respect that you think is smart, a great leader got good experience, has been on some good football teams, understand what it takes, how to play the game, and get him in the room with those young guys. I kind of said that when we drafted Okuda, that it would have made more sense to draft Okuda if we had Darius Slay here. Because without Darius Slay here, he had he had a coaching staff that couldn't develop Polaroid film, let alone a player. Right. <laughs> so, well, I talked- also, if I could put one thing in here, there's – I, I listened to something that GQ said, and it definitely hit something right on the head. He's talking about the difference between coaches and players. Well, the great thing about the Lions is, is they have coaches who were players, so they can talk both ways. They're like, listen, this is what it's like to be a coach, but since I played the game, I can also tell you what it's going to be like in the game. And Aaron Glenn, being a former cornerback, let's just call it for what it is. I'm pretty confident that – Aaron Glenn having that experience from the NFL has greatly helped freaking Jeff Okuda's development this year from what we have seen. Also, the fact that he's been able to stay healthy, also a great help to him being able to come further along. Right. And, well, and, and the thing, hold on, hold on a second. The thing that I would say about that, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. The thing that we have to be careful of is the connection, though between the players and the coaches. And what I mean is, this right here. Jeff Okuda don't know Aaron Glenn as a football player. Just going to be, I'm going to be honest with you. He doesn't know, he never watched Aaron Glenn as a football player. Now, the things that Aaron Glenn could tell him will help him. But as a player, you feel like Aaron Glenn played in a time that's not like your time. So you you don't disregard what Aaron Glenn says. Aaron Glenn brings things to the table, but that veteran corner that has some experience can link the connection between the old school and the new school. Because sometimes you get these new school guys and they don't really respect old school guys because the game is different. What you used to do back in the days, A.G., it's not like that these days. It's different. So when you have that veteran guy that's young enough to be able to bridge the gap, they can take what AG is saying and make it relatable to how Jeff Okuda understands it. And that that was one of the things uh, in the 2021 offseason when we didn't have a lot of money and we were – signing these prove it players there was a prove it player i wanted to grab because he played on a defense that had a decent secondary he may not have been a great player but he played on a good defense and that would have helped the maturation of amani oromarie and jeff okuda trey waynes 
Trey Waynes right. from Minnesota, who played under Mike Zimmer, who's a great defensive coach. He just couldn't coach offense to save his butt. I, I would have liked to have seen him here because we could have had him for as cheap as he went on the, on the road for. We could have, he signed for what was it, one point eight million dollars? We had that, right? And, but but I think, and I'm not a GM. I just know how I would be if I was a GM. Because I, you know, I don't want to say this to be whatever, but I've been a GM on Madden a couple of times back in the days, trying to assemble different teams <laughs> and put guys together. <laughs> and this is what I'm saying: you want guys that understand how to fill the role and how to teach the role. Trey Wayne's great player, but he was a nickel corner for the Minnesota Vikings, so that means he was a role player for them. He was good. He made plays. But he was a role player for them. He was under Xavier Rhodes. He was under the Harrison Smiths. He he had guys, I think, over him that just helped him play a role. You need guys that has been the star, but they maybe wasn't a superstar. So that know what it's like to be the top guy on a team and of a group. They may not be the top guy in the league. But they know what it's like to lead a group, a secondary. Or maybe like I said, uh, I always, Patrick I, Peterson. Well, see, Patrick Peterson would be what you would call the superstar. Mm-hmm. He was the guy in Arizona. He went to seven, eight Pro Bowls in a row. He was the guy there, right? So he's going to cost a lot of money to bring here. Yeah, True. depending on what, he's going to cost a lot of money. You need the guy, like I said, like me. I wasn't my favorite player. I wasn't a sixty million dollar. I wasn't it's that 20, simple. I'm saying I wasn't a twenty million dollar guy a year. But the brain that I had, the experience that I had, the relatability that I had, the teachable things that I could give to these guys, is what you wanted, and right. it didn't even cost you that much. So then gotcha. would you be in favor of going after a free agent corner like uh, Jonathan Jones or Byron Murphy, who are guys who are playing really well this season and are playing really crucial roles for their teams, like specifically Jonathan Jones is on a, on a tear this year for the Patriots, but he's a guy that you can get for under $10 million uh, a year. He's only 29 and he's young, but he also has that experience that would translate really well to an outside corner like Jeff Okuda, who plays with a lot of length uh, and a lot of physicality. And I feel like he, I, him, Byron Murphy, who plays that same kind of role, but he's a little bit younger, maybe doesn't have as much experience in the league as a guy like Jonathan Jones, but a little cheaper. Would you think those are good guys that would fit in this scheme as well to kind of nurture those young corners? I, I think those could be possibilities, but I think there's also... Just being that it's Detroit, <laughs> just being that it's Detroit, it's also, there's also another caveat that has to go into it. You have to find the right person. You have to find the right guy that's humble enough, that respects the game enough, that's willing to do. Because sometimes you get these guys who on the surface level, they fit the role. But in real life, they feel like they're bigger than Detroit. They big time. I'm from LA. I played for Arizona. I played for the Cowboys. I played for my, like, they're big time. So going going to Detroit is like a downgrade, right? You get some first round draft picks. Like Aiden Hutchinson loves it in Detroit. He's from there. But you get some of these guys who are not from Detroit and they get drafted there early and they just like, bro, I didn't want to come to Detroit and they tough it out and they try to do the the right thing. But deep down inside, they don't even want to be in Detroit because they feel like they're bigger and better than Detroit. Mm. So you need to find that guy like an Aiden Hutchinson that wants to be there, not just because he's from there because he just loves the opportunity. He loves the challenge. He don't care where it's at. You what say that you you said something key right there, and it made me think of one player that was there when you were there that we drafted just before you got there. Who? And Dominic and Sue. Yeah. Yep. 
He didn't want to be there. As soon as yeah. you said it, as soon as you yeah. said it, that's the name that popped in my hand, head. Right. You know, and Sue was a great player. Right. But he probably could have been more. You, you, you see what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's hard. You got to find the right guy. And, and like I said, I'm not trying to continue to toot my own horn, but I feel like my background and where I came from as a kid, coming from summer Mississippi, going the JUCO route, going all the way to Albuquerque, New Mexico, getting drafted as a fourth rounder, I was excited and appreciative of every opportunity that I got. So when Martin Mayhew told me, hey, I want to change the perception the culture in Detroit, and you want, and I want you to be the guy. 